Hey everybody, welcome to AJS News. This is video two of two for today. But first, an important word from our sponsors. Uh, Mr. Lopez, how are you? Pretty good. How's it going? Uh, well, after that great phone interview, this is kind of just a formality. We're really excited to have you aboard. Just wanted to get to know you. Tell me about yourself. Well, I like to be active. Uh, I like to do uh, boxing, a little bit of kickboxing as well, some jujitsu. Uh, I like to go on hikes with my dog. Um, just about anything, swimming. Womp, 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 womp. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, what, what were you saying? I like to womp, 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 kick, womp, 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 my dog. Womp. Wait, what? That's awful! Get out of here! You can, no, you cannot work here! Wait, why? Out! Why? Go! Why? Come on! Security! Get him out of here! This is unbelievable. Disgusting. Guys, you only get one chance at a first impression. Make sure it's a good one. It's time to level up your groom game with the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Trimmer. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com forward slash Angry Joe Show. Guys, I know you've been there. You've got those nose hairs peeking out. you got those real long ear hairs going everywhere. Take, care. Me. Take care of that stuff. It's I got nasty. It. It's called Grandpa <laughs> Hair, and I got that, and this <laughs> does work. Trust me. Yeah. Links down below. Alex, tell us what the hell else has happened uh, over the past week in gaming. Uh, Valve has been hinting at something, and it's not Half-Life 3. I'm not even going to tease you uh, about that because that's that's what I want. Um, what but everybody wants. Counter-Strike 2 uh, is okay. something that they've been hinting at. We've seen in, in the NVIDIA drivers and other things that people have been doing some data mining. And so there is a trademark of CS2 uh, that they, they just got. Yeah. So, um, that's Gee, it was on March 14th. They were granted two trademarks from CS2 from the U.S. Patent Office. So these people really excited about the opportunity. This would actually be like Counter Strike five or six. I mean, yeah. there's, been a, there's been a bunch of different ones, but um, yeah, people are data mining. They're really excited to see what's uh, potentially coming uh, because Counter Strike still like absolutely kills it. You're talking like Matt, like concurrent players uh, every now and then up. I think it's up in the millions, um, and Oof. so it's like really, really popular stuff. So. <clears throat> That would be nice to see. Um, it's been forever. Forever since I played it. Really? I mean, <laughs> I, we used to play Day of Defeat. Um, yeah. That one, yeah. I remember playing yeah, that C one with Danny C and them. Yeah. CS Source and Day of Defeat. Uh, and also, CS Go News. Someone just spent $150,000 on a gun skin. One. What? You know, remember how... $150,000. It's about one hundred and sixty. Really grand. nice car. Did you yeah. say one? Yeah, one gun skin. One, one gun skin. You know, we're like, there's, there's no one stupid enough to, to get into Pokemon NFTs. This guy. That's the name of a yacht, right? Gun skin? No. It's his yacht. No. That he could go across the world in. No. No, it's a gun skin. An actual gun skin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, there's why. there's your biggest whale. They want to get that guy in uh, many many games. Yeah. it was a factory new, which is the highest, you know, the the best rarity uh, for the gun skin. Excuse, wait, wait. Excuse me. Excuse me. Factory new. So digital good. Fa factory new digital good. These yeah. these two things. So they don't they, they do it in the same way that like FIFA or Madden does, where like this is the platinum one, this is the highest level because uh -huh. you a gun skin can drop and it be scuffed, <laughs> and then it could be like in pretty good condition, and then in really good. This one was factory new and it had stickers on it, four of them, and the four stickers, which if you total up the value of the stickers, was almost one hundred and sixty thousand in itself. So this guy got a great deal. Oh my god! And um, so the, you know, hey, that's a great deal. I got some shit to sell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to sell him, Joe? Uh, <laughs> What's in your pocket? <laughs> it's a surprise. Okay. You want to take it? <laughs> no. I'm putting my hand in your pocket again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it had four, four reason hollow <laughs> stickers, um, each worth forty grand. Apparently, stickers uh, can go as high as $40,000. Um, this is just, it's, it's sad. It makes yeah. me sad. And um, It does. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Anything else you guys want to talk about? A guy no, wasting one hundred sixty thousand dollars. No, I just that it exists. <laughs> there are people out there that do that. That that actually helps contribute to uh, these ecosystems where uh, developers and publishers see that and they get even more greedy. So they try to put more microtransactions and try to create the secondary market, 
which is the exact confirmation that this stuff is gambling, that this stuff is that needs to be regulated, because then the companies say, oh, no, 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 there's no secondary market. We're not facilitating it, but it's there. It's there. It's happening. So, um, yeah, it sucks. And, uh, I mean, obviously people can do what they want to do with their money, uh, but sometimes when you do that, it has an effect. And uh, this can have an effect on the rest of gaming. I'm just hoping it's money laundering, <coughs> like uh, like often, like as a, especially like big companies that are trying to clean their stuff. Mm -hmm. They will buy art or they will buy other things, and then they can sell it. You know, sometimes for even more, cover the cost of the laundering. So, hoping, hopefully, it's just money laundering. Um, bad news for gamers today who are looking to have all sorts it's of sex in oh. Starfield. Um, and because they're, they're like, that's the next step. that Want to explore, explore the galaxy and have sex with it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that an alien? I'm yeah. going to have sex with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have sex with that hey, alien. Look, that's been part of Star Trek since the very beginning. <laughs> explore the galaxy, find strange new worlds and strange new aliens and have sex with it. Yeah. <laughs> very Zap Brannigan. <laughs> nice. Captain Kirk. Well, yeah. uh, so the, according to the Australian government, humanity, uh, the classification board that rates the games has said, nope, there are, there's no sex within the games. There's all sorts of violence. Um, I guess people <laughs> were hoping for the Mass Effect scenes and the romance and that. Romance, no romance. not gonna happen. Nah, there was some some good some some some. I thought I liked the fact that there were more romantic options in mm -hmm. Mass Effect, and I like it when they when they have those options there. But yeah. no options here in Starfield. This is about exploring the galaxy and being lonely forever. <laughs> being forever alone. Put your dick in fucking moon dust, all right? Because they ain't going nowhere else. Yeah. So the Australian government says none at all. Um, there is a mild Ooh. a spot of very mild impact nudity. Mild impact. So I don't know what that means. Uh, half, butt cheek. Half a nipple, like a butt cheek. Yeah. yeah. Impact nudity, man, when you when you crash your ship, ship into something, your your character model f tumbles out and his butt you know, falls out. I don't know. <laughs> so you're going to have to wait for the modders. Impact nudity. Uh, so as someone who just recently modded both Oblivion and Skyrim, mm. uh, completely modded it. There are all sorts of adult things that yes. people can put in these games. So you just have to wait a little while until the modders <laughs> get their hands on it. And then I'm sure you can explore... Whatever you want to explore, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I see some very crazy ones. Yeah, yeah. very. I was like, how do you even come up with this shit? No, for me, it's why, why, <laughs> why. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about System Shock. Uh, that was supposed to come out at the end of this month, but it just got delayed until May. Um, they just said they're just gonna make the the time frame. They'd hope to bring the game to market by the end of March, but it turned out to be just beyond our reach. We are, uh, after all, merely human. Um, and so yeah, just, that's fine. Again, take your time. Uh, make sure the game is working, unlike some other ones that we've played. Mm -hmm. And take yeah. yeah, you don't need to crunch. Yeah. So cool. they're, uh, May thirtieth is now the new release date. So it's not too far into the future. Just time to to polish everything off and make sure that it's ready. Uh, we also, there's a little bit of a shakeup at Twitch. CEO Emmett Shear steps down. So he was actually one of the co-founders. Uh, he's resigned from the company. Uh, the current president is, ta is taking charge. Um, just said he's done. He's the just like, man, it's fine. He's made enough money. Yeah, he's just I like. I don't know much. Of, I just don't like the way Twitch has been run. And so if he's responsible for a lot of that, then good. We need some new leadership mm -hmm. in here. We need some people that, that can be active, more active about Twitch and good policy rather than bad policy and uh, inconsistent um, enforcement. Mm -hmm. Oh, wildly, yeah, wildly. Uh, so he's going to continue to work with Twitch in an advisory role, always going to be kind of part of part there. But he says he's got really, he's got great confidence in the people. He never felt that for a long time. He's like, look, the founders, we need to be here and kind of like do all these things. But yeah. now I feel like it's in a spot where he can step away. Okay. So uh, I don't think it's going to change anything, honestly. I think it's it's very much exactly the same things are going to continue to happen. But <coughs> yeah. here's, you know, it is some change. So hopefully something does come from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jen O'Neill and J. Allen Brack, former uh, Blizzard executives, um, are going to make a new fully remote game studio. So they're going to be working on some new stuff. Now, these are the people that she left because she was a super high-up executive of VP, and she was like, hey, I'm a woman. Why aren't you paying me? And they're like, well, because you're a woman, and we don't like you, uh, other than when we want to grab you. And then she's like, well, fine, I quit. And they're like, fine, we'll give you as much 
money as the person who does exactly your same job and title. And she said, no, fuck you. So she's great. Good. Uh, and then J. Allen Brack, who was at the head of at the Blizzard at that time where all of the shit was going down, the grabbing the, the Cosby suite and all the other stuff. And so he ended up separating, feeling that him leaving would allow the company to heal. He was pretty much scapegoated because it was rampant throughout the entire organization and not just through him. But they're starting a new studio, going to be fully remote. Um, and they, we don't have a whole lot of information about that, um, <coughs> but just new stuff coming from them. Uh, and speaking of Blizzard, Diablo 4 beta came out this weekend. Uh, didn't work on Friday uh, at pretty much at all. You could play for, you'd wait in line for anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, play for about 20 minutes before you got an error, kick back out into the hour, hour and a half queue. So That was us. Yeah, Friday was pretty much a total bust, but it ended up working over the course of the weekend with minimal queue times. I mean... Yeah, uh, not super long over the rest of the weekend, but um, some people were were uh, understandably a little upset about how things were run. Blizzard is just like, look, it's our beta. We you know, it never it's never works paid. out. But this is a paid beta. You paid specific. You either had to buy a product or pay extra money to play during this time. And so, people who don't have a lot of free time were upset. But uh, I was playing on Sunday. No, no, no queue time on Sunday, no. but uh, I I kept getting kicked out. Oh, you have getting kicked out. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I only got kicked out with a couple errors. Um, I finished the beta. I, I leveled up um, two characters, and it seems pretty good. It's a, it's there are people who have become completely solidified solidified their opinion on the game, which it's like Act One. You get to play for honestly, it's it's like thirty minutes to an hour of a Diablo game in the early levels, which is never all that impressive as far as customization. But there's some good stuff there. We'll just have to see what the, the end of the game looks like. But if you want to see what we thought of it, there's a video that, the, that Joe posted over the course of the weekend. So make yes. sure you check that one out. Um, yep. Very, very early impressions. Obviously, mostly uh, the connection issues. And uh, everything looks good. Except for maybe some of the characters. But that can all be taken care of. Act 2, Act 3. I don't know how many acts are in there. Uh, hopefully a lot of acts. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also another major patch and launch this weekend. It was Star Citizen. Their biggest update uh, came out this last weekend, and it Isn't broke. That what they always say this is our <laughs> biggest update. Yeah, is the game out yet? Is yeah. it in? Is it in uh, final? Final access? Uh, final release? Uh, answer, please. No. Okay. Uh, it actually went backwards because uh, what the, the game like l legit actually broke. Oh. Uh, it was a, a major outage. People couldn't get in. If you could actually get in, nothing would work. Your character would be stuck in space without the ability to access anything. Uh, they wanted to add things like uh, items remaining after death, cargo being represented by actual physical crates that can be moved around, the introduction of the salvaging profession. Yeah. Um, but the, the launcher struggled and became unresponsive. Yeah. Uh, players were seeing massive amounts of different area uh, mm -hmm. of, um, error codes. Um, and then the, the on Monday, the developer escalated the severity of the issues to major outage and took the game offline so the team could p perform modifications. Um yeah, people of course are fine with it because yeah. the you know the sunk cost fallacy is strong, and if you spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars in Star Citizen, and you're really forgiving of it because you you're part of it. Like they've you, this is this is part of their sales model. They know they've got you. You swallowed the hook. You yep. continue to give them money. A lot of good studies could be done over yeah. that game. Yeah, and then they're <laughs> o they're over what six hundred million dollars in total, and like we're at a point <clears> now. Some cost mentalities. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's just uh, you know I'm I'm hoping that the game comes out and it blows everyone away. I want to be the guy that sits there and goes, man, I fucking love this game. You know, thank you guys all for you know putting up with all that shit. I won't yeah, put up. I was in original backroom. Yeah, Took my steel card somewhere I lost it. I mean, I lost that eight years ago, but yeah. you know. So we want we want it to be good. It's just it's not <coughs> it's still not looking great. Right. <laughs> and I don't think I'm actually joking. Yeah, I mean, I you used to oh, I saw it like what? two years ago. Maybe like another like five like. years. Aren't they gonna have to update the graphics and stuff? Oh, a new completely new engine. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, some companies. And they're like, we're done, uh, but we've got to delay it because the engine's too old. <laughs> yeah. You could just be like uh, Bethesda or any of those other uh, companies yeah. that use the same engine for a fucking decade, whether they should or not. Yeah. So, Squadron Forty Two. Let me know when that's out, and then and then obviously from there the big open universe. Uh, let me know when that's out. But as long as not Mark, interested well, in any of the fucking betas. And Mark Alphas. Hamill got paid, right? So it's yeah. fine. Yeah, How long ago? He, he recorded his voice line so <laughs> yeah. long ago that there's like the, the old crackles and stuff. Like you can hear the <laughs> static over them. Yeah, man. Some of those, uh, yeah. There was uh, Battlestar Galactica, I think. The, the CO, ex, uh, second in command, did some stuff, I think. 
Yeah. All right. Well, you had some things that you wanted. Uh, did you, right? Oh, yeah. I uh, got uh, Capcom releases uh, pretty uh, um, fun and yet disturbing cute little anime uh, for I'll Resident Evil 4. See if I can put it up on. Oh. Yeah, I put think the copyright thing. Yeah, on there. yeah, I, I, I think we're all right. Video game stuff usually doesn't do it, Joe. It's more, mainly when you put clips of my fucking uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show and and fucking you know movie trailers. Video games, mm, they like to share their stuff. So far, <laughs> we'll let you know if we get pulled down, or you won't even see this. But yeah, so basically. Um, it's cool little anime, and but it's like happy, but it's also creepy because it's fucking Resident Evil, and the Japanese do the the coolest things and the weirdest things, and I like it. So watch this little Resident Evil Four anime short in anticipation of the game coming out this week on March twenty fourth. Uh, we don't have an early copy, uh, so don't expect a review anytime soon. But we will be reviewing it because we've been loving these Resident Evil games. I hear it's doing very very well, so that uh, both well and um <clears throat> honestly i want i want more resident evil uh cute anime oh uh, no that's more also evil disturbing <laughs> so check that out um also we got to talk about the biggest for me biggest story um so james gunn uh has confirmed that he will be directing superman legacy so he's decided after much debate Nobody can do this better than I can. <laughs> you know, and okay, I'm going, I, I thought about shitting on him, be like, no, nepotism, put your wife and everything. Of course, you're going to do this. You know, that. He addressed it. He addressed I, it. I, well, he did? What did he say? He said that she's only ever been in one movie. <laughs> right, right. And he wasn't in charge of, ca or he was in charge of casting there. And he's like, I'm not in charge of casting for anything that else. That bullshit. She's been in as many projects as Henry Cavill <laughs> has been. Actually, Cavill cameos, if you include them all, that's four. She's been in three. Uh, she's going to be. <laughs> she gonna, anyways, anyways. So, um, I, I, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I actually respect this move because it's like, all right, put your money where your mouth is, and James Gunn is going all in. Okay, if this is his DCEU, he's gonna launch it. Superman launched, Man of Steel launched the DCEU, and it was a good film, but a different portrayal of the Superman character. I've always looked at that film as an Elseworlds story, and I think it is extremely strong as one. Uh, but now it's time to see a more traditional Superman, a more bright Superman, a more hopeful Superman, um, and one that really symbolizes what Superman's legacy is, Superman legacy. So I'm hoping, and so James Gunn is like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do this right. Um, and I'm going to do it myself. So I'm, I'm actually curious. Uh, speaking about the nepotism with his wife, everybody's concentrating on his wife, but the motherfucker casts his brother and everything. <laughs> if you see this, so they, they forget that, he, that if you want to make that nepotism argument, it's actually stronger with his brother rather than his wife. But, Every writer, but now director, director producer does all that stuff. And you'd do that shit too. If it was your wife, you fucking would do that shit too. Yeah, but, Picard. Um, <laughs> Listen, uh, no matter how good fucking Cavill was, and he was really good, uh, just with Except the material, the the, well, that's not his fault, the, the material that he was given, not that much, but I am willing, uh, because I'm such a fan of the character, to give it, um, to give this new one a chance. Um, what I've heard from it, you know, as far as the, the, the reporter and, and it sounds, oh, it's not an origin story, but yet it sounds like all the elements of an origin story. That's a little disappointing, but I, like I said, I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, and I can talk more about it in this separate video if we want to go into the nitty gritty, but um, I think that you can be upset about... Um, you know, the DCEU and some of those actors, there were really good moments in Wonder Woman and Superman and all these various films uh, that I hope we were going to carry over into the DCU. And so you can mourn the loss of that. You can also, you know, think that the Snyder fans are kind of super, super annoying, entitled brads that are kind of over, overzealous on their own brand and then trying to shit on, on everything, which I'm sure is going to be a thing. I, I think even if uh, James Gunn's movie is um, excellent, it's still going to get downvoted like a motherfucker with the angry Snyder fans. Uh, but hopefully they keep an open mind, too. So... 
Um, I'm open to a new creative vision. And so now we know that there's no excuse. James Gunn's not going to be like, well, uh, well or other people will say for him that uh, uh, it was the director's <laughs> fault, not James Gunn's fault. Or, oh, it was studio interference. No, motherfucker has he's full control. Studio. He is the studio. <laughs> and now he's the director. So honestly, as a Superman fan, this news uh, you know, makes me excited and I'm, I'm willing and open to see what he can do with the character. Obviously, the casting is going to be super important and um, the story. It can't just be... It, it, this Superman film better not feel like a Suicide Squad film. You know what I mean? It better not feel like a Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't want that same thing, you know, that same thing to be for Superman. He has to be his own thing. So, we'll see. Hopefully. James Gunn uh, has announced it and he says... Uh, Yes, I'm directing Superman Legacy to be released July 11th, 2025. So we got two years away from Superman's big and, and a potential resurgence of Superman fans, and I'm excited <laughs> for it. Um, though we'll probably get 27 while. Batmans in between here and there. <laughs> Gunn writes in a tweet, My brother Matt told me when he saw the release date, he started to cry. Oh. I asked him why. He said, dude, it's dad's birthday. I hadn't realized I lost my dad almost three years ago. He's my best friend. He didn't understand me as a kid, but he supported my love of comments and my love of film. And I wouldn't be making this movie without him. So uh, it comes out on the same day as uh, his dad. Um, uh past or his dad's birthday. Uh, it's been a long road to this point. I was offered Superman years ago. Making that point. <laughs> I was offered this years ago. There's a Henry Cavill thing happened afterwards. It's not my fault. I initially said no because I didn't have a way in a way in I didn't have a way in that it felt unique and fun and emotional that gave Superman the dignity he deserved. Because remember, I gave him shit. It was like, motherfucker, you said no or you know, before. And now all of a sudden so he's explaining that. We're actually getting an explanation for it. Then a bit, then a bit less than a year ago, I saw a way in. In many ways, centering around Superman's heritage, how uh, both his aero, uh, aristocratic and uh, Kryptonian parents and his Kansas farmer parents both inform who he is and the choices he makes. So I chose to finally take on writing the script, but I was hesitant to direct despite the constant pestering by Peter Safran and others to commit. Sorry, Peter. Just because I write something doesn't mean I feel it in my bones, visually and emotionally, enough to spend over two years directing it, especially not something of this magnitude. See, that worries me. Like, if you don't already excited, like, in your bones, like, with me with Superman, that, and, and then you have to decide that it's in my bones, it feels like it can quickly get knocked out of it. But, but he's responsible for this much of the new DCU, and if, he's, if he <coughs> is saying that two years, that's pretty much my whole life, he won't get to manage the rest of the universe. Maybe, as much maybe as that's what he's referring to, that this is going to affect his ability to manage the rest of the DCEU, or the DCU yep. but he wants to make the Superman film as best as possible. Uh, his final line is, but the long and short of it is, I love this script. I'm incredibly excited as we begin this journey. Well, it didn't. He didn't say it's now in my bones. He just said, "I I love it, and I'm excited." <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see if uh, James Gunn can do uh, the uh, Superman uh, justice. All right. That was it was one of it, honestly, who, who like I said, <laughs> uh, he was on a list of directors that I had for the next uh, Superman film uh, because I do think he can do it justice. So in a way, it's exciting. It's just the part that, that upset me is that he's got to throw away all of what was before. I think that you should take good elements from the previous DCEU and inject it with new life and move forward. Um, but that's not what's happening. So we have to move on. And um, I guess they'll... Uh, Gal Gadot is out, and Cavill is out, and Affleck is out, and we're going forward. Affleck with... is out, out. He said some horrible. He's like, "There's no fucking way I." No would fucking work. way. I'm right. directing anything in James Gunn's new DCU because, and if you read between the lines, it's because he's like, "When I do a project, I do it my way," mm -hmm. and he's he's got an ego. He's like, "I don't want to be connected to your shit. I don't want to have to do cameos for your new characters and your then." And I understand that, but it's very pretentious. Uh, I don't know, Affleck. 
Anyways, uh, that's it. So that's all I got. Um, thank y'all so much uh, for watching. And thank you to our sponsors as well. If you mm -hmm. can click those links for us, it always helps us out. And we will see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. <clears throat>